Welcome to another video on operations management. In this video we will discuss what is meant by the planning and controlling of operations and the activities involved. We will also discuss the types of demand that organizations respond to when planning and controlling operations. Without further ado, let's get into it. So what then is planning and controlling of operations? Planning and controlling of operations are often treated together because the difference between both activities is unclear. Both activities are interlinked. An easy way to differentiate them is that the planning of operations is usually seen as in the long term, while controlling of operations is in the short term. When planning operations, this requires the setting of the overall objectives or goals of the operations. In this process, aspects of the operation such as the production processes, finances, the anticipated demand and so on, are treated in aggregates. As for controlling of the operations, this requires the disaggregation of the aspects of the operations involved in this process. Controlling of operations focuses on the immediate or short-term requirements of the operations or the individual activities involved that accumulates into the entire operation. So where planning of operations aims at defining what the organizations aim to achieve with its operations in the long run, controlling of operations has to do with what can be done to keep the operations going in the immediate. Where planning examines the operations from an aggregated stance, controlling disaggregates the entire operations. So what is the planning and controlling of operations? In this video, we define planning and controlling of operations as concerned with the activities that reconciles market demands and the ability of the operations to deliver. This requires activities such as scheduling, sequencing, and loading in order to produce the desired quantity and quality of output most efficiently. We will discuss these activities later in this video. So, if the planning and control of operations is the process of reconciling demand with supply, then it is reasonable to conclude that the decisions taken to plan and control an operation will depend on the nature of demand handled by an organization. It is difficult to determine demand. The higher the uncertainty of demand, the more difficult it is to plan and control. In operations, not all demand is characterized by uncertainty, hence, the types of demand. Demand in operations management is classified into, dependent and independent demand. Let's consider dependent demand first. When demand is dependent, this refers to the ability of an organization to predict demand for their product or services with a level of certainty due to known factors. Take for example business relations between two companies. Mercedes-Benz, a car manufacturing company signs a deal for the supply of tires with Michelin. In this kind of relationship, Michelin is dealing with a dependent demand. How so? If Mercedes-Benz produces 200 cars, Michelin know it needs to sell or supply 800 to 1,000 tires to Mercedes. This is due to the fact known by Michelin that Mercedes has produced 200 cars, hence a dependent demand. We describe the demand from Mercedes-Benz as a dependent demand because it depends on known factors. It is a predictable demand with a relatively high level of certainty. This type of demand is also called a derived demand, a demand influenced by the demand of a related product. As for independent demand, it is unpredictable and it's not derived from the demand for another product. The factors influencing this type of demand is unknown. It is difficult to plan for this type of demand due to its high level of uncertainty. Considering this, responding to this type of demand depends on estimating the future nature of the demand. Let's consider an example. A car garage such as Quick Fit Garage. Quick Fit is a company that specializes in car services such as MOTs, servicing, tires, and other repairs. It is possible to conclude that Quick Fit deals with an independent demand as the demands it receives from its customers are hardly related. More so, the services Quick Fit renders are mostly based on time on unforeseen occurrences, factors that are unknown. In this case, Quick Fit's demand is independent because it is unpredictable and estimated. After determining the type of demand, what follows is the planning and control activities within operations. These are activities that are used to respond to demand. 
Before responding to demand, an operations manager needs to determine the following. Loading, that is, how much work or demand is allocated to the operations work center. Sequencing, in what order does the operations respond to demand. This is usually determined by predefined rules. Scheduling, which has to do with when to respond to demand. Now, let's briefly go through these planning and control tasks one after the other. Loading. This refers to the process of allocating work to the work center that is used to respond to demand. This could be made of persons, machines, or a department. The amount or work allocated depends on the nature of demand and the capacity of the workstation or center. For this reason, loading is characterized into finite loading and infinite loading. While finite loading implies that there is a maximum amount of work that could be allocated to a work center, Infinite loading has no limits to the number of demand that could be received. Sequencing. This is used to determine in what order demand is tackled. In other words, it is used to determine the order of priority of demand received. The predetermined rules used to sequence demand could be based on physical attributes, customer priorities, delivery dates and so on. The predetermined rules largely depends on the type of operations managed. Finally, scheduling. This is the most complex task in operations management as it is time-bound. When determining when to respond to demand, this could be scheduled forward or backward. Forward scheduling is when the operation responds to demand as soon as it arrives, while backward scheduling involves waiting for the latest time possible to respond to demand. As previously stated, both forward and backward scheduling are time-bound. So what have we learned so far? We have defined planning and control of operations as the reconciliation of demand to the ability of an organization to supply or respond to demand. We have characterized demand into dependent and independent demand. Where dependent demand is predictable due to known factors, independent demand is unpredictable and estimated. We have also identified activities that organizations put in place to be able to respond to demand. These activities include loading, how much work is allocated to a work center, sequencing, in what order does an operation respond to demand, and scheduling, when to respond to demand. This is where we will be stopping in this video. In the part 2 of this video, we will discuss other aspects of planning and controlling of operations. For now, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.